Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the transformative power of Christ's love. If you are here, you belong. And that's for all of us who are here present and those who are viewing from our viewing platform, literally from Washington State to Maryland. Good morning and welcome, everyone. So you're probably wondering, who, who is he and why is he here? My name is Kevin Pritchett. I'm a member of the congregation here at Grace. Father Chris is still on vacation, and apparently there is a shortage of supply priests to come and help do liturgy, so Father Chris asked me to lead us in morning prayer. So what that means is we will not have Eucharist this morning, and we will have prayer, good morning, prayers and music, so the form of the service will be generally familiar, as you're used to. What I'll invite us to do is pay particular attention to how we pray. It will be kind of prairie this morning because we don't have the Eucharist and the normal forms there. When I am leading prayer, the program will say officiant. That's pretty high church kind of language. I want you to think all of us praying together, like we do on the morning prayer call. We pray together. And in reality, when we pray, we are not praying to a man in the sky petitioning, bargaining, reminding this man of something that he does not already know. No. We are boldly stating that which is true, that God is all that there is, and everything that we do is a manifestation of that singular spiritual truth. So this morning when we pray, think to yourself and be in that consciousness of Praying together. Imagine us sitting in our living room and just praying together. Okay, is that fair enough? All right. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. All together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
reading from Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, 
when the king over Israel in Jerusalem applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see, all is vanity and chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be master of all for which I have toiled and used up my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have closed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid, upon, laid up for many, many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool. This very night, your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please be seated. So... This is the point where you're probably expecting, yeah, he's going to talk about we make too much money and we shouldn't be worried about money. Eh, wrong. I'm a lawyer. Remember, I throw out widows and orphans. I help rich people get richer. I'm not talking to you about that. I'm asking you one question. You ready? Why are you here? I'll ask it again. Why are you here? Well, Kevin, do you mean here in this church? What do you mean? Like Jesus, right? He asked questions and they got all confused and then he used that as a teaching opportunity, which is what I'm going to do. Little story, transparency. I graduated from an elite prep school, was four in my class, went to Notre Dame, graduated in the honors class, and the freshman year I was admitted to the uh, honors, honors class, an honor that didn't normally happen. Got a uh, scholarship to college, actually, then went to Cal Berkeley, got honors grades in constitutional law. There is a point to this, by the way. Honors grades in constitutional law, estate planning, my third year thesis, and Roman law. Externed on the Ninth Circuit Federal Court of Appeals um, and worked at a very prestigious law firm in San Francisco. I had made it. Was in my own office. Lawyers, right? We have our own offices because we do confidential work. So cubicles would not work for us. We have our own office. So I was in my own office. Stacks of work everywhere. So I wasn't thinking I was buried. I was thinking, yeah, I'm good. I have all this work. They, they have confidence in me. One afternoon, I'll never forget it. I, I was in San Francisco, looking out over the San Francisco Bay in the middle of the afternoon, and all of a sudden, it hit me like a ton of bricks. If you're such a hot shot, why aren't you sailing out on the bay? You're working for those people sailing out on the bay. What's up with this? And all of a sudden, my type double A overachiever life kind of slapped me in the face. Now, make no mistake, I'm not here making any statements about what we do for a living, making money, supporting institutions. That is just what it is. It's a knife and a fork. Jesus never riled against money for itself. What the gospel talks about is misalignment of value. Does that make sense? Misalignment of value. So I go back to the very first question I shared with you. What, why are you here? Lately, this question has come before me enormously strongly. Uh, I've been practicing law, that's my career, for over 36 years, um, and have enjoyed it and help, have helped hundreds of clients uh, achieve their, their goals and helped not-for-profits. But lately, I've been asking myself, so what's the next chapter of your life going to look like, right? Do you relate to that? Now, for those of you who know me, who know that I'm also a jazz musician, make no mistake, that will not be the next chapter of my life. 
I've had two gigs in the last 24 hours carrying my heavy 60 pound keyboard all around the uh, Chicago land area. That will not be my future, I assure you. Um, seriously though, spirit has been like, when God puts something in front of you, it doesn't go away. It keeps coming back. You try to ignore it. I try to ignore it, but it keeps coming back. So I ask you the question, why are you here? Because I've been asking myself that same question. What is it that spirit has for me? What is coming through? And you know how you know? When something is so strongly in your awareness that you can't give it up, that you can't turn away from it. And I've shared this next story with you before too. When I came to Grace, I'm longtime choral music singer, right? Many years. So I came to Grace thinking I'll just slip into the choir, sing like I've done for the previous 40 years. And the minute I got here, God had different plans for me. I assure you, I had no plans to be standing up here in front of you or any of the other things that I do here at Grace that give me so much satisfaction and joy. You know why? It's because when I serve in those capacities, and at any time we serve in the alignment of what Spirit has for us, we get joy from it. How many people here are artists, creative sorts? I know, Cynthia, you paint. Some of us musicians, other people do. Yeah, Max, sing. The key to answering that question, why are you here? Or what gives you joy? Or what gives us fulfillment? is the proper right alignment. All three readings this morning talk about that. The first one, I have loved it forever. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I lay awake at night, I'm so vexed by my life. I do all these things and there will be no one after I live to take them over. Business owners know that one, right? I built up this business and there's no knuckleheads here who are going to take care of it as well as I do. Right alignment is the solution out of that morass. Not a diatribe against money or our careers or wealth. Wealth helped build all the institutions that support society. So that's not really the deal. The deal is alignment. Do we put our value do we put our identity with whatever it is we do for our profession? Sometimes we do, it's okay. I mean, I'm a lawyer. I identify with being a lawyer and all the things that lawyers do, the way we think, the way we analyze issues, spot issues, help solve problems. I will, I will admit, to, I do identify for that. But my value, my worth, is not in how much billing I generate for my firm every year or how much money I make, or where, or any of those things. My value is in the quality of my relationship with Gretchen. The quality of my service here at my faith community. How well I prepare for a gig. And do I serve the music? Do I serve the musicians I play with? Do I serve my friends? Am I a good friend? Do I help people who need me to help them? Friends, the quality of our life is directly proportional to our alignment with Jesus' great call, love God and love one another. Right alignment. So I ask you, why are you here? No, oh, i got to walk back. used to this. Now this is a very interesting part of the liturgy, right? Do you ever wonder why there's an affirmation of faith right after a sermon or a reflection? The church says, okay, we're not quite sure what those knuckleheads in the pulpit are going to say for many week to week. But we want to make sure the faithful understand that this is what we all believe in. Kind of interesting, isn't it? 
So when we recite this creed, let us pray it from the standpoint of this is the bedrock of that which we believe as our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Reciting the Our Father together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now in the silence of our hearts, let us offer to God our own thanksgiving and petition. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So this is the part where I would normally be up there giving announcements, but I'll be right here giving a few quick announcements. First of all, thanks, amazing thanks to Julie, Pierce, and uh, Megan and the entire academy staff for an extraordinary vacation Bible uh, school. 
few of us were here afterwards for the celebration afterwards giving out popsicles. The entire church was transformed into a children's chapel. The kids were dancing up here to the big TV screen. It was beautiful to see. We're going to do more of that, so stay tuned. But thanks to the staff for incredible Vacation Bible School. Choir Boot Camp, August 15th through the 18th. There will be a special announcement that Maestro will make during Choir Boot Camp about a tour that's being planned for next summer. So yeah, join the choir so you can go on tour. Heck yeah. Um, special word of thanks to Annie Asher, friend, choir member, member of this church all of her life. She goes off to North Carolina to study music. We are grateful for your service, your singing. We love you. All the best to you, Annie. Uh, final announcement, clear your calendars, mark your calendars. The Sunday after Labor Day, we're going to have our fall kickoff event. It's going to be a serious party. Cook-offs, family, family activities. So uh, we're going to kick off the Circle of Grace small groups then as well. So just mark your calendars. Uh, invite friends. It's just going to be a serious party because you know we like to party and we know how to party. Speaking of party, there will be coffee hour uh, after service, so please join us for that.
Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all from your measurable love and the redemption of the world by your Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. being here and my personal thanks for Andrew, the liturgy staff, for helping me through this week because this is not what I do for a living. <laughs> Have a beautiful day everyone.